Hello, and I'd like to welcome you to our first Solid Experience podcast. Um, the subject that we want to discuss with you today and, and kind of have a round table between us here is simulation. Um, we're going to go through uh, simulation, the history of simulation, where it started, where it is today, uh, simulation on the cloud versus on premise, the different roles that are available, uh, the differences of SolidWorks and the other products, a uh, little bit our history, products that we've done in the past. And I'll start by introducing myself. My name is Alex Habersh. I'm the president and CEO of the Solid Experience Group, which consists of both solid experts and mechanical solutions. Um, to my left is Jean-Francois Niaison, who's the chief operating officer of the company. And to my right, okay, my right-hand man, if you wish, <laughs> is my uh, chief of uh, the sales operations. Um, and we're going to discuss a little bit the projects and things that we've done um, in, a, in an open format, just a discussion format. Um, a lot of you are, are, have heard uh, the term simulia, okay? um, which is, you know, Dasso likes to throw a lot of different terms out at us. What exactly is that? And what, what are the definitions of simulation and what can one do with simulation? Um, simulation is a very broad term. Fluid dynamics fall into simulation. You can do uh, analysis of magnetics and electrics and heat transfer and actual uh, weights that how they impact things. Uh, if mm -hmm. you uh, destructive analysis, it's very, very vast. Um, but we're, what I want to do is start with a little history and we'll start with with Jean-Francois. Uh, in fact, Jean-Francois began in uh, mechanical solutions. Um, wow, 30 years ago now. And 30 years ago, he was hired because he was an engineer who specialized in, in uh, finite element analysis. And he began on a very interesting project. Tell us some more. It was, yeah, the project of projects, I'd say. So, yeah, so about, uh, about 30 years ago, um, uh, I was working for Mechanical Solutions and they, they were approached um, to actually participate in a very, very prestigious, I'd call it, Canadian projects mm -hmm. where... Canada was actually supplying um, the Canada arm, uh, the second generation, the larger one for the space station. And uh, what we were asked to do at the time was to uh, develop, if, if some of you have seen these pictures, you might have seen that on the booms of the actual Canada arm, um, there's cameras, there's computers, there's a whole bunch of, of technological uh, gizmos uh, on it. But you have to fix it, you have to attach them on these composite uh, tubes, these long composite tubes. And so these pieces are very critical to make sure that you don't end up, you know, watching a broadcast from space and all of a sudden the camera detaches and flies off into space. So what we had to do was to design and simulate, of course, validate the design of those, those parts, those brackets, however you supports, to support the cameras and computers on the booms of the Canada arm. And, and the tricky part, and it was very, very interesting, but very time consuming at the time, was that we had to design those parts so that they, they would survive two very distinct and, and in, some, in some ways, uh, you would say, contradictory uh, conditions. So during launch, they would have to survive approximately 34G of vibration during launch. So a very difficult environment to survive. Uh, and you would need a part which is very, very solid, very rigid to survive that. But then once you're in space, the conditions are completely different. But you're exposed to the sun and then you're exposed to, to darkness uh, about 12 times each a day with temperature gradients that are, are switches, changes in temperature from about 180 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, to be honest. I don't know. Uh, 300 and something, I would guess, uh, almost 400 for Fahrenheit, I would say. I hope I'm not saying something stupid. Uh, <laughs> when you're facing the sun and about minus 120 Celsius when you're not. And so, because of thermal expansion, you're on a boom, which is composite, doesn't move, and your part is made of some aluminum alloy, which does expand and contract under heat and under cold, uh, then your part has to be very flexible because it's gonna wanna expand. So it was, a, it was quite a challenge, but what's really interesting, I think, about this topic today, and, and we'll talk more about this, is how technology has evolved. Because at the time, um, I remember this took, oh gosh, I want to say a good four or five months uh, wow. of work. Uh, because, Iterations. Yeah, well, that, 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 see, that's the key. The key is the technology. The technology back then 
was very, very expensive. The computers, as many people know, uh, especially our older viewers like us, uh, <laughs> uh, the technology was very, very, very expensive. We're talking tens of thousands, even $100,000 for a complete station to do these kind of work. And, um, and, and we're talking about cycles that could go from 12 hours to 18 hours every time you push the button and, and start analysis to get your results, to find out you have to make a modification and you make another one and another one and another one. So very, very, uh, a lot of it manual too. So uh, very time consuming, but but fantastic work. Uh, the same work, I mean, without going too much in detail on that project, the same work today, I would venture, would probably get done in maybe a week or two because there's still some man time, you know, to design yeah. the thing. But, but the, iter the iterations went from, from, you know, 14, 15 hours for, you know, half a day or more <coughs> to minutes. Literally. And um, the 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 software you were using back then is in fact uh, also a Dasso product, and and so I'm saying you know you're familiar with you or most of you have now heard about a product called Simulia. What is Simulia? Simulia actually wasn't called that at the at the beginning. When I first started uh, selling Dasso's products back in the mid '80s, uh, there was actually a product called Elfini, and Elfini was a a uh, analysis software that Dassault Systems had created really much more for Dassault Aviation. It was a product to, to, to be able to do simulation for yep. their aircraft that they were building, you know, the Mirage Jet and Falcon Jets and so on. So they right. needed a tool and, and they didn't like the tools that existed. So they came up with their own tool and it was Alfini. And that was the product that we were using for this product and for many other projects that we were doing. And in fact, the 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 products that we we did, I mean, Alfini. I I mean, I bought a license of that product. I bought the workstation for that. And and like you said, it, it, this is hundred thousand oh. dollars. Then I had to have the engineer sitting behind it doing this job, doing this calculation. Mm -hmm. right? And and you've got to make all of that pay for itself. Today, the nice thing is. On a PC, and not an extraordinary PC, not a PC that has you know so many gigabytes of memory and all the rest of that. Ultimately, today you have an, a, a capability of sending it up in the cloud. Yeah. And you know the whole concept of cloud. We should explain okay? that. I think. Yeah. yeah, we should, should explain that. Yeah. You know, if you think back, in, you know, years ago, the perfect example of what's cloud, Google is cloud. Yeah. Right. I mean, I go Google and I can type in pretty much anything. And if my dishwasher breaks, I can see why it broke and I can see how to fix it. I, anything I want to know is in Google. Mm -hmm. Now, think of the compute power behind that. Yeah. Think yeah. of the rooms and rooms and rooms of computers and all of that memory. Well, Dassault now puts that at your fingertips to do simulation. So I can now take a car. Right? I can design a vehicle right? and I can run it into a wall. Mm -hmm and watch my car deform itself like the real car will. Yeah. And I remember still back in like the mid 90s, so you know, still 25 years ago, um, Boeing was testing this and uh, I just was doing a lot of contract work with Bombardier on their planes and we were doing tests on the wings and they had uh, actual jigs to do fatigue testing. I remember this. Right? Yeah, I remember seeing so that. they would take the wing and do this and keep doing this and keep doing this and keep doing this. And in fact, the requirements of the FAA and, and all that is that the wing has to be able to go 150% past the maximum deflection. It's impressive when you okay? say that. Very when you think that a wing does this, but 150%, the wing is like Whoa. this. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, how many times can you do that before the wing breaks? Right? And in Katia, and back then it was in using Alfini, you calculated and it said the wing will break here and it will break here when you hit this and after this many repetitions. Yep. And it actually broke within three millimeters of where the software predicted it would break. It works. <clears throat> it actually works. <laughs> you now have those at your fingertips. And uh, yeah. the nicest thing that I now see about about some of the offerings that we have in in not only cloud computing is you can have a term license. Yeah. Okay? I mean, you know, yeah, okay? you can we can it. now sell it to a customer uh, on a quarterly basis. So yeah. I I have multiple designs that I do in my company of whatever my products happen to be. And <clears throat> I can now get my simulation software for three months. Yep. And I'll run all my simulations and modify my designs to make them work properly. And then say, okay, I don't need this for now. Yeah. Okay. And now I'm going to go back and design more stuff or start putting my stuff into production. 
it's it's almost like saying, you know what? During the summer months, I want a convertible Lamborghini, and yeah. I and I only need it for three months. I don't want to pay. I don't want to own it. Wonderful. I don't want to have the depreciation. I wanted to talk to you about that. <laughs> Deal. I'm, su- I'm, su- <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm sure you are. So, uh, Mohammed, what are the the modules? That, what are, what are the roles that are available? Uh, we have two different roles in 3D experience. Uh, while in the SolidWorks site is structural, structural engineer and structural uh, advanced engineer. So th- this gives you you know access to uh, some modules uh, mm-hmm. and from Ab- from Similia Abacus. I mean all the all the software you talk about it. And uh, we, you can, you know, upgrade this role internally. You can buy, for example, um, as well the um, uh, mach- uh, time machine. So you run th- on the simulation on that. Uh, and you can, you know, use a specific module for a specific uh, project. I mean, and change it after that. Yeah, so we can do simulations of, of uh, heat flow, for example, flow. if you have electromechanical designs where you have a fan and you need to know is it's going to provide enough cooling for a computer Correct. based or, or or you design a PCB board and you put it in there is this going to work exactly um, and you 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 said abacus okay um, how does abacus fit into this whole thing uh, well well uh, that's what system put you know a similar as, as a, like a name for all the tools they have so uh, they bought uh, abacus since uh, I don't know if it's uh, quite a few, years, quite a few years, years ago now, I think, ago. yeah. yeah. Abacus, uh, a well-known, you know, uh, uh, final talent uh, analytic software. Uh, and they in- incorporated in uh, all the Similia, uh, uh, Similia on offer yeah. product. So uh, you can, you know, you can use Abacus without knowing knowing that you are using Abacus. You know, that's that's the thing that, that um, you know, the, the, the toughest thing that we have as a job is to is to basically educate people about what all these things are. There's, you know, you, you've heard of Simulia. There's something called Enovia. Enovia. Okay. <laughs> there, which Simulia represents everything that has to do with the simulation environment. So, yeah. and what Dasso does, they have been acquiring companies along the same veins and then yeah. on all the pieces together. Uh, same thing with Enovia, w- which is basically uh, product lifecycle management, more data management type of tools, all the tools that you use to manage your database and manage your production going from there. You've got Delmia. That's Delmia. It. I was missing a letter. And so it, it wasn't working in my mind. So Delmia, which are all the manufacturing problems, which will take you down to shop floor and NC and all of that Robotic, stuff. Yeah. Um, so all of these pieces are, are, are composites of many different things. And they're all divided into roles into processes. Exactly. And that's how you can choose what your role is or what processes you want to work and how everything has been segmented together. Correct. So we now have a very, very broad product offering that we have together. Well, well yeah, what's, what's amazing is that for, for, since we have an audience, uh, really in our audience we have people who use Katia, have been using Katia, some others have been using SolidWorks. And for those who have been using Katia, they're more familiar with this. They've had, they've had this family of products available to them for a while. What's so amazing for the people using SolidWorks, and uh, maybe we take a quick second to explain how they get access to what you just talked about, which is amazing, is when, we, when you hear the word 3D experience, all of that really is, is take your SolidWorks that you have, connect it, as Alex said, to the cloud, and the cl- in the cloud is the 3D experience, and it gives you access, once you're connected to it, to all these wonderful different types of tools that uh, people in the Katia ecosystem have had access to for a long time. And I think the word democratizing, is, would that work yeah. in English as well? It democratizes these technologies which typically for years and decades have been too expensive to, um, to reach a broader audience. Exactly. And, and I think that's the real game changer here. And when, when Dassault speaks, I know it sounds weird sometimes, but when they speak about the industry renaissance, I think that's what they really mean. They mean, let's, let's, they found a way through the 3D experience, I believe, to make all these tools and all these, these, uh, these amazing um, products available and democrat, democratize, excuse me, so that for everyone. Exactly. So, yeah, so everybody I, can I think use it. I think the nice thing is that we sometimes, the, the uh, Dassault, being a French mm-hmm. company, they have this way of, of doing things which is uh, uh, very advanced and they're, uh, you know, Bernard Charles being a visionary, he sees all these things, but he gets so far ahead of people. Sometimes it gets lost in translation. Sure. Mm-hmm. And in this particular case, the way I look at things, the nice thing about bringing all these tools together, we're now doing it through a platform. Yeah. And that is the 3D experience 
platform. Yeah. Okay, so that you have access to all of these two different tools and roles inside of this platform. That makes it really, really unique. Okay, um, let's get back to, to some of the history. Uh, some of you may have noticed this thing sitting here in front of me. What is that? Um, yeah, what is that exactly, right? I mean, it, this is actually 3D printed. This is actually a, a miniature, obviously, of the United States Air Force Memorial. And that Air Force Memorial is found in Arlington, uh, Virginia. And it was done as, as a memorial to uh, pilots that has lost their lives over the different uh, conflicts that have happened mm -hmm. over the years. Why is this here? Why am I talking about this? This... Uh, uh, actual project was one that Mechanica Solutions uh, did all of the engineering work for and we had to do a lot of simulation yeah okay this is a toy this is very small but all you have to do is go use Google and <laughs> type in United States Air Force Memorial and you'll see how big this thing is this top spire here is in fact 280 feet wow. tall wow. now the unique thing about this thing and that makes it special <laughs> is this is actually a plate I, of the titanium, and it was wow. made in titanium. This is the thickness of the, this entire structure was made out of titanium. Okay, yeah. there you go. Do your Ooh, do your weightlifting. Okay. Do your weightlifting in the morning. <laughs> okay. Wow. This was a project we Impressive. did for one of our customers okay. in Toronto, who's actually a metal fabricator, and we did a lot of projects with this guy in metal fabrication. What he does is he relies on us to do the engineering. <laughs> And in addition to doing the engineering, we do all of the shop drawings for him to actually manufacture it. Yeah. Now, one of the key criteria of the architect who designed the form was that he wanted this to be done out of titanium because it won't be affected by weather. It has unique mechanical properties. The other thing is he insisted that not a single weld be shown. Now, obviously, this is made from bigger plates than this little plate. They're huge plates. But you have to weld them together. Mm -hmm. And when you weld them together, there cannot be any warpage. Yeah, you can't have challenge. you can't have this whole thing look like a a, a, a pizza that you turn the thing upside down. Can you it has it to be. With a, with a yeah, you can't grind it. You I can't. Can you grind. can't. You can't. You can't do any of that stuff. It has to be done so that there's no shape changes well, in the whole yeah. thing. So what we what we did and using simulation, this was a this was mm -hmm. a real tough thing to do. What we ended up doing is uh, welding spot welding on the inside of the structure. Uh, almost look like nails mm -hmm. okay so that when mm -hmm. we were welding it would extract the heat out of the it act uh, like radiators that's right it act heat like sinks. act like radiators. so you yeah. act like a heat sink inside of that the other uh, engineering thing that we really had to work on as far as simulation is a structure that is this heavy imagine 280 feet and that's that's quite a big diameter around the bottom as well it gets affected by wind. It gets affected by you know the, the climate, uh, the by wind, wind yeah. by snow. Yeah. Well, not much snow will stay on it, but the wind <laughs> will hit it. So we had to put counterweights in the bottom of it, and they're made of lead. Oh. Now they got a swing, okay? But there are several series of counterweights in this whole thing to balance Amazing. all that stuff. And this was a project that we did some 15 years ago. You wow. need to simulate that. Right? You can't yeah. just do no, that. You can't. You, otherwise, I mean, that's when bridges yeah. fall down. And that's, yes. why, yes. that's why engineers have little rings on their finger yeah. here in Quebec, right? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, that was a very interesting project. Now, in our history, we have, we have always been a company that uses what we sell and sell what we use. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, that's part of that's key to this whole yeah. thing. So, you know, this is just a, an interesting example of some of the things that we've done. Um, this is our first of hopefully many podcasts. Mm -hmm. We would like to, we, we're, we haven't figured out exactly how we're going to do it yet, but we're going to give you a little box and we'd like your suggestions for the next one. Yeah. Uh, in this particular case, we're doing a theme because this month is the simulation month, so we're doing simulation. But um, we know that sometimes the, the product and the language that comes from Dassault is kind of difficult. So we're here to actually... Um, of, uh, translate it all into awesome. normal speak that you guys can understand. And have fun doing it. Absolutely. Have fun. I, so, don't forget maybe to mention, because it's this, this is a simulation month and now we're a monthly uh, Solid Experience webinar series, yeah. that uh, next week, next week is it Mohammed? I think? Uh, the last week of February. Last yeah. week of February, we have a whole series of webinars mm -hmm. uh, and dedicated to simulation. So we invite you to go on our websites, whichever one, Solid Experience, experience Solid Experience or Mechanical Mechanica. Solutions. And, and, and register and go watch. They're very in, uh, informative. So I'd like to thank you very much for the time you've given us. And uh, we hope to see you at the next one. Thank you. Thank you.